What we have here at the uppermost, you know, uh, trunk here of the tree is polygons. Okay, so polygons could be triangles; those have three sides. Uh, quadrilaterals, four-sided figures, pentagons, five-sided figures, hexagons, and so on. But what we're doing is we're focusing on the quadrilaterals here, so the four-sided figures. Okay, if you take that uh, down one more level, quadrilaterals can be subdivided into kites, parallelograms, and trapezoids. Okay, now let's see if we can kind of talk about the distinctions here. So a kite actually looks something like this, okay? And what's interesting about a kite is it has two pairs of consecutive sides, meaning the sides that are next to each other, uh, congruent. So these two sides are congruent, these two sides are congruent, but these are not congruent. Now what's interesting about a kite is that there's no pairs of opposite sides parallel. Okay, so these are not parallel and these are not parallel. When we go to a parallelogram, a parallelogram looks something like this. Okay, and it, a parallelogram actually has two pairs of opposite sides parallel. So these are parallel and these are parallel. Whereas a trapezoid only has one pair of opposite sides parallel. So you can see these are parallel. If they kept going, they wouldn't cross. But these two sides, if they kept going, they would intersect. So if you're thinking about, you know, how do I distinguish between these different quadrilaterals, think about do they have any pairs of opposite sides parallel? Do they have two? Do they have one? Do they have none? So continuing on, we're focusing on parallelograms where you have two pairs of opposite sides parallel. And then you can subdivide down from there. You can subdivide down to rectangles and rhombuses or rhombi, however you want to say it, and then squares. But let's start with parallelograms here. So parallelograms, let's go through the different properties of parallelograms. So a parallelogram looks something like this, okay? So you wanna uh, memorize these different properties, but by understanding how all the figures are related to each other, you can reduce down you know, the number of uh, things that you have to remember for each shape. And I'll show you what I mean. So parallelogram, we know that these opposite sides are parallel, okay, like that. So that's what the arrows represent. We know that the opposite sides are congruent. So these are the same length, these are the same length. We know that the opposite angles are congruent. Okay, so the angles that are across from each other are equal. We know that the consecutive angles, meaning the angles that are next to each other, those are supplementary, they add up to 180 degrees. And we know that the diagonals, okay, they bisect each other, so they cut each other in half. So I'm just going to put three marks here, and I'll put four marks over here. Okay, so they're cutting each other in half. So those are the properties of parallelograms. So then when you go down to rectangles, a rectangle, it is a parallelogram, it is a quadrilateral, it is a polygon, so it has all the properties of the ones above it on the tree here, okay? But in addition to the properties above it, it has additional ones, and for a rectangle, Okay, a rectangle basically looks like this. It is a parallelogram, it has all the properties we mentioned here, plus it has four right angles, okay, four 90 degree angles represented by these boxes, right? Also, what a rectangle does is it has congruent diagonals. So this diagonal is gonna be the same length as that diagonal. Because the diagonals bisect each other in a parallelogram, this piece, this piece, this piece, and this piece are all gonna be congruent. Okay, so are you with me so far? Okay, so now we're gonna talk about rhombi or rhombuses, however you wanna say it, rhombi for plural, right? A rhombus is a parallelogram, it is a quadrilateral, it is a polygon, but in addition to all the properties above, a rhombus kinda of looks like a diamond shape. It has four congruent sides, okay? So all four sides are congruent. And what's interesting here is that the diagonals are perpendicular to one another, they form right angles, 90 degree angles. And one more thing, the diagonals are gonna bisect or cut in half the opposite angles. So they're actually gonna cut those angles in exactly in half. Okay, so what you wanna do is you wanna think about, okay, a rhombus is a parallelogram, so it has all the properties, you know, the opposite sides are gonna be congruent, the opposite sides are gonna be parallel, the opposite angles are congruent and so on. But in addition, it has four congruent sides, okay? And the diagonals are perpendicular, okay? And the diagonals bisect or cut in half the opposite angles. 
If we go down to square, a square you can see is actually a combination of a rectangle and a rhombus. Some teachers uh, joke that it's a rhomtangle, okay? So they kind of like combine the names, but it's really, okay, a square is a combination of a rectangle and a rhombus, and it'll have all the properties of the ones above it here on this chart. Not like a kite and a trapezoid, but just down this main trunk right here. So if you look at a square, it pretty much has everything that you could possibly think of, okay? It has the four right angles like a rectangle, it has the four congruent sides like a rhombus, and then all the other properties like, you know, that we talked about above. So one last tip in this video is that sometimes you're looking at a figure and you, you might forget. You say, hmm, in a rectangle, do, does a, do the diagonals in a rectangle, do they bisect the opposite angles? Hmm, I, I can't remember. What you can do, and this is a nice little uh, tip here, is go ahead and make an extreme example. Okay, so there's a rectangle. You can see the four right angles, right? But when you draw the diagonal, check this out. Look at that diagonal. Does this angle look like it's congruent to that angle? Not even close, right? So you can tell, you know, that the diagonals are not bisecting or cutting the opposite angles in half. But if you draw your rectangle like this, it almost looks like a square. And when you draw that diagonal, you'll think, oh yeah, it does look like it's bisecting. So that's why I say try to draw like maybe an extreme example of that particular shape and you'll be able to get a sense of whether what you're investigating is true or not. But if you internalize this tree diagram and understand that the ones that are below it have the properties of the one above it, you'll be on your way to memorizing all these different shapes and their properties. So if you're enjoying these videos, subscribe to the channel. I look forward to having you as a member and uh, we'll talk about more uh, math videos uh, coming up in the days and weeks and months ahead. And go ahead and check out some of my past videos. I'll see you in the next video.